Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I'm looking at a Ford Galaxy uh, 2 litre HDI. So it's this engine here, I've taken off the plastic engine cover. So it's the old TDCI or HDI engine that crosses over with the Citroën. Um, he's got a few codes on it. Um, now I've just spent a little bit of time looking over this vehicle uh, before I made the video. And it's, there's a little something strange going on, I'm not sure exactly what's happened. So it's it's recently been in for a service, um, and he's had them do some diagnostics. They said they can't find any issues on it. So if I use my launch Eurotab 3 scan tool here, we go to the diagnostics. Now it's already had the oil changed, but the warning is still on for it. Apparently they couldn't reset it. Um, particle filter, soot accumulation, and Exhaust gas, temperature sensor, bank one, failure. Um, so, we seem to have got an exhaust gas temperature circuit issue. And a P2463 soot accumulation code. Okay, so we're going to have a look at some of the live data here. We've just ticked off some of the items we're going to look at. So, catalyst temperatures, coolant temperature, DPF pressure. We've got exhaust gas temperature sensor there. Is that a thousand degrees? So either we've got a very bad sensor there, or we have. It can be that that sensor is not actually fitted to the car, but we're gonna give this vehicle a few revs, a little, just a few slight revs, see if we're getting any movement in the temperature here. Don't seem to get much movement from the exhaust gas temperature sensors. So I've got this sensor from Lucas to fit into the vehicle here. So we're just going to make our way under the vehicle here. We can see that the oil filter has been changed for a nice new one there. So we're going to come around the back. We've taken off the tray there. And if we come around the back, we can now see the DPF just here. Okay, so I'm going to try and get the camera up here so we can see the exhaust gas temperature sensor there. Now if we come over here, I'm trying to see where I am, hang on, what's going on here? We've got a hole where the exhaust temperature sensor should be, so it's not plugged in. And if we come down over here, there's the sensor, it's just hanging there. So I'm not sure what's going on there, I don't know if someone's had the sensor out looking at it during the diagnostics. Or has it just worked its way out? I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on there. But we're going to try and get this fixed. So we'll get a new sensor in there. I'm not going to bother trying to fit that one. The wiring now may have been damaged or melted. So we've got that sensor out. The tread doesn't seem to be damaged. Um, and that looks like it's been off the vehicle there for a fair while because you can see the black soot all around it um, where it was just dangling in front of the the hole where it should be bolted into um, fortunately I can't actually see the threads on, on the hole just yet because there's so much so much black soot there um, so it's hard to see but it doesn't look like the threads are damaged I've got no idea it's just really strange how that that was just dangling under the vehicle and the customer has been back a couple of times complaining about the fault uh, he's had the diagnosis done um, and he's also complaining you know that he's got to keep his windows open he can't use his heaters because the smell of the exhaust is, is coming into the car now that is a very dangerous thing to um, to drive around with if you've got a hole in your exhaust and you've got exhaust emissions coming into the cab um, it's, it's a very dangerous thing to drive around with you can you can pass out it can give you monoxide poisoning um, 
and basically kill you and probably make you crash and kill somebody else as well. And his diagnosis at this other garage that he's been using for the past few years was, don't worry about it. He paid for a diagnosis, they said, we looked at it, we can't see any issues, don't worry about it. And that's how they left him. So he's just come over, to, he's made a journey to um, drive down to me to actually try and get the, the issue resolved here. So um, I'm not even going to test that. We've got a brand new one. I'm just going to go ahead and just stick it in. Okay, so I've tried to clean up the holder where that goes into. Now, bearing in mind, I can't get my head up here. This is this is as far as I can see right here. But of course, I can get my hand up here with the camera and have a look at that hole. Let's have a look at it. And see, there's threads in there from where I'm looking back here. So we're gonna get try and get that new sensor in there. You can see where it's been pushing exhaust gases everywhere, all over the car here. Those hot gases as well. They could have melted his wire in here. Caused a lot more issues for for uh, himself. Okay, that sensor has been bolted in there nicely. It's bolted straight in we didn't have any issues getting it in so the thread is all perfect I just really don't understand how that's been left off I don't know don't know what happened there but um, anyway the new one's in it's all tightened down okay now we've got that in like I said exhaust gas temperature some sensor number three it doesn't have one so if I had a look underneath we've got sensors one and two and you can see now that they're working so everything looks all good all right so we ran the vehicle for a few minutes there just to get the temperatures up make sure everything's working we got 140 degrees we got 90 degrees on the coolant temperature so we're just gonna now get the DPF sorted out so we'll get that uh, pressure and soot accumulation down now obviously what you can do for that is do a forced regen but we don't want to do that what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some flush through there to get all of that nasty soot out of the system there so when we hold the revs up around 3000 we want to get that down to around about 50 there, where it's idling around about 130. We need to get that down to around 50 millibars or lower. Between 40 to 60 millibars usually, it should sort of sit. Okay, so if you watch my channel uh, regularly, you'll know what I'm about to do now. Launch UK DPF cleaning fluid. Best fluid I've, I've used on the market. And I'm going to hook that up to my Milwaukee compressor. Again, very good compressor works on a on a battery so it's very handy for me to use in the van here now i'm going to connect that up with my hose here we'll get that fluid into the spray bottle and pressurize it up to 120 psi okay so we've got that all mixed into this bottle here this is launch dpf gun matches the fluid basically the letter and has worn off it i've used it a bit too much and um, we've got that connected here now to the compressor we've got the hose running under the vehicle here right up to the dpf and we have disconnected that DPF pressure hose there that goes to the center and we've connected the uh, DPF cleaning fluid hose there directly into the into the DPF and I've used a reel of hose uh, fuel hose here this just to get it to seal into there nicely so that fuel hose connects onto my gun right there now we can squeeze the fluid, squeeze the trigger, get the fluid pressed in. That'll go into the, the straight into the DPF there. Fill it up. I'm just going to hold this until all of that fluid's gone in there. Okay, so what I've done, I've just put about half of that fluid in there, just because the DPF sits a bit close to the turbo, so we don't want to fill it too much. We'll now start the car up, and he's got an oil required, oil change required message on there. Uh, even though he's paid to have the oil changes, they couldn't reset it. Now, with the engine running, we're going to squeeze the trigger. We'll hold that squeeze until all of the fluid's gone, and push pushed it away right through the DPF. So that should take around about a couple of minutes to empty this bottle out. Now that's all done, we just connect the sensor back up there. Okay, the fluid's all in. Sensor's connected back up. Pressure hole's connected back up. We'll be getting a bit of suds coming out the rear of the exhaust, just like that. 
Okay, we'll hold the revs back up around 3000 RPM again and we'll just hold it here and watch the DPF pressure. Hopefully we should be able to get that down nice and easily because it's not it's not terribly blocked this DPF. I have, I've seen a lot worse than that. So you'll see that little chart there coming down. And I'd expect that to sit somewhere between 40 to 50 millibars like I said before once we're done. anywhere within this range now is fine but we'll get it down lower than that so yeah I've been getting recently questions on my videos asking you know what is a healthy DPF pressure where should it sit now it shouldn't sit too high but it also shouldn't sit too low either a healthy DPF generally sits round about 40 to 60 millibars at 3000 rpm I mean You'd, you'd want to see sort of maximum of 80, maybe 100 millibars um, just, just before you'd say your DPF is blocked. Um, and then at idle, you want to be sitting somewhere between sort of 2 millibars to a maximum of 10. So idle between 2 to 10 millibars at 3000 RPM, sort of 40 to 60 millibars, or say 40 to 80 millibars maximum. You can see now the chart is sort of evening out a bit, so it's it's just slowing down. We had a it started off with a big drop, and then it just slows down. So we'll hold these revs now for another couple of minutes, and just see how far far down we get it. Okay, we've held it for another minute there. We got a few spike revs, but it doesn't want to go any lower than that. So we'll let it idle down now. And we're getting sort of six to eight millibars jumping around a bit. Okay, I'm gonna go back under, we'll get that tray fitted back on the car. Okay, now all of the work is done, we're back in the vehicle here. We're gonna get these codes cleared off and reset the service for that. If you don't reset that service, your DPF will block up. How's about that? And we'll get that reset. DPF is now down to an acceptable level, so that can be reset also. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Right, let's go back from here. Uh, we'll just press a clear code first. Well, it might have to do that again anyway. We'll just clear that. Go to special functions. Reset. We'll go into the powertrain control modules. Reset particle filter values. That's now done. Switch the ignition off. That's successful. Now we'll go here to reset the oil change indicator. Mission is not on. Try that again. My life is at zero percent. Failed to reset. Uh, maybe I'm going to have the same problem. Okay, so I wasn't even reading that. I was just pressing OK too quickly. So it's telling me to go to the instrument panel. To reset it so i'm going to do do that there exactly what that's telling me to do okay we got the oil left there hold it to reset okay that's successful so that's it nice and easy we didn't even actually need no tools for that now but you can see it's at 100 percent now okay we're just going to take the vehicle for a little quick test drive make sure everything's okay okay so we took it for a short little drive around the block there everything seems okay 
just going to put on the blower motors and let that run for a few minutes just to get any sort of smells out of the system I could do with like a, an air freshener car bomb whatever you call them they put in there and sort of get the smells of the exhaust um, exhaust fumes out of the car uh, I do feel sort of guilty for having to get this guy drive all the way over to me um, but he didn't tell me that he was having exhaust fumes he didn't mention that until he got here um, coming in the car you know um, it's not a not a safe way to be driving uh, if you've got exhaust smells coming into your car and then continuing journeys he said he drives his car to Oxfordshire Oxfordshire which is a couple hours from him a um, couple of times a week or once a week and um, so I'm glad in in a way I'm yeah I'm, but I'm glad we got that sorted for him so he's not driving with exhaust fumes coming in the car okay that's it it's all finished send the money's way and I'll see you on the next video